All right, everybody. We will be in Ezekiel chapter 20 this morning. Ezekiel chapter 20. Um... We won't get uh, very far into it today. It's kind of a long chapter, but we're getting into kind of a history lesson for the people. Um, we'll probably make it uh, through verse 8 today. Uh, but there's a uh, a lot of history that, the, that uh, they're going to get a bit of a refresher on that they ought to have known. Um, and I was thinking about this last night, but... You know, it wasn't that long ago, as I was, as I was reading through this again, and I, I started looking at the, the history that God was uh, given these uh, elders, and I got thinking about how it wasn't that long ago where I didn't know a lot of the history behind um, this book, and because I sit there thinking, we read, we know the stories that, that God is going to be going over and refreshing their memory about, and you think, well, they should have known all this, but, you know, they they went through a whole lot longer time period away from some of those events than, than it's been since uh, some of the events that have taken place that, that uh, we really should be looking back on and seeing the history of, and, and just in the last few months when I've been been reading and studying more um, because of some information that uh, got me curious that Shane uh, started bringing in um, the history behind the, this book and and th there's a lot that's went on um, that give give you a deeper appreciation for the Lord but nonetheless we'll get we'll get more into that uh, later. In chapter 20 of Ezekiel, in verse 1, it says, And it came to pass in the seventh year, in the fifth month, in the tenth day of the month, that certain of the elders of Israel came to inquire of the Lord and sat before me. So the last time we saw this, you know, they came in, in chapter 14. They they wanted to inquire from God. Same same reasoning behind it. They... they uh, they didn't really care um, to listen to anything God has been trying to tell them. They didn't care um, what uh, Jeremiah had been teaching throughout the land. Uh, what they cared about was, was getting um, the confirmation that they could listen to the liars, that they could listen to these false priests. Uh, that, that was their, their focus. They, they wanted to come and they wanted to inquire um, hoping they would get a different answer, um, but not come out of their wicked ways and their sin and their filth. Um, that's that's what their desire was. I know we've covered this and covered this, but but that's what their desire was was, and that's where they desired to be was to just get back to how things used to be. They they wanted nothing more than to get back to um, their homes, their land in, in Jerusalem and in Judah, get back to to everything that was an abomination to God. That that's what they they that's where their desire was. They wanted to get back to their adulterous ways, their fornication, their theft, their murder, their worship of false gods. They wanted to get back to to what they felt made them feel good, um, rather than than. Um, being under the judgment of God uh, or, or even following him because we know that there's a lot of things in this life where this flesh uh, especially if we allow ourselves to get in the flesh that uh, the Bible tells us there's pleasure in sin for a season um, but what comes of that is, is you always want to find the next best thing you know that, that pleasure whatever it may be in, in, in their wickedness it kept growing and growing and growing until it was just getting out of control uh, and they were becoming so vile and wicked to God and that that's something that they, they aren't understanding That's people don't change, they don't understand in today's world just because they were finding that it's, it wasn't a big deal 
for for a lot of these abominations that they were living in, the lifestyles they chose to, to live, the gods they chose to serve, the God that had given them everything that they uh, chose to turn their back on, um, they weren't comprehending that just because they deemed it was fine, they deemed it was no big deal, uh, it was a big deal to God. God had major issues with this. If he, if he wouldn't have had issues with it, they wouldn't have been in captivity. They wouldn't have needed to be inquiring from uh, Ezekiel before the Lord. Um, but I just, I find, I find it curious that uh, as, as we'll get into this again, they, they hear these lies. They hear these lies from the, these uh, <clears throat> priests and, and, and prophets that are, they're false. They're, they're telling these lies. They're, they're sitting here um, wanting to believe them. Uh, but they obviously don't believe them or they wouldn't be coming to Ezekiel to inquire from God. Um, they would be just sitting and inquiring and believing um, in believing uh, the ones that are telling them the lies. But here, here's, here's a bit of the difference um, in, in now and in, in where people uh, today and in the churches today, at least they, they they would believe a lie. They would hope that lie was was believable, but at least they would go attempt to inquire from the Lord. We'll see that it would, uh, in the next uh, uh, few verses, obviously. God's not going to deal with it, but the, they would go inquire from him. Um, people in the churches today, they just want to sit back and believe the lie. And we'll get more into that in a, in a, in a bit, but that, that's, what, that's where we're at today is They'll just sit there and blindly follow the lie. They won't even seek uh, what the Bible has to say, what God has to say. They want to believe the lie that allows them to continue to live the life they live, live in the sin they live in, and, and move move along. Um, we we live in a world today when it, when you preach about the conviction and the sin of this Bible, people don't want to listen to it. All, all they're interested in is if they even go to church. Um, all they're interested in is uh, what the preacher has to say. They won't check for themselves if it's true. They won't. They won't uh, go to prayer. They won't read their Bibles. They, they won't do anything to make sure that the pastor is not telling them a bunch of lies. And we know that there's a lot of churches out there today that are spewing a bunch of lies. Um, I was just reading last night just some of the differences in. In the other versions, again, just kind of studying through some of that, and just the subtle changes. It's one of the pamphlets Shane, Shane got, uh, I believe, most everybody, most of the families in the church. Um, but I, I was reading through that, and just some of the subtle word changes, whether they just remove a word, or, or, or just change a, a small phrasing, or they, you know, they 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 call uh, they they start calling Jesus teacher instead of master. These are big differences. These are these are subtle changes where where people won't really understand a little bit um, on the lies that they're being uh, taught. They they don't understand the difference in the context. They just believe it uh, because it's easier to read or uh, inevitably. Whether they realize it or not, it allows them to, it's giving them that fulfillment to, to go out and live in their sins. And, and I'm going to add ahead of myself too there, but, but that's, what, that's what, where they're at here um, in, uh, in verse 1 here when they come to inquire of God. They're not, they're not interested in coming uh, to God um, in any way but to, to uh, hopefully hear a different answer and have confirmed that their captivity was going to be shortened, uh, that, that they could leave the that they could believe the liars uh, spear, uh, that are that is fearing uh, these lies about a, a short captivity. Um, they, they wouldn't hear God's judgment upon them. His wrath upon them was going to end soon. Um, and that's just that's just not the case. They they kind of are starting to get to a point where they're they're beginning to realize there's some of the events taking place that Jerusalem is very much going to be destroyed here soon as, as much of the uh, nation of Judah had been destroyed which is what that brought them to be in captivity anyway under Nebuchadnezzar 
and, and the Babylonian Empire, uh, but they're beginning to realize that their entire home, it, it's a very real possibility that it's about to be burned to the ground, just as Jeremiah had prophesied, and just like Ezekiel's prophesying to them in captivity. And we have these same signs. You know, you can look and see how, th how God doesn't change, and he gives us stepping stones throughout history in his book. He gives us examples, and and we see these same things taking place right now. God has given us signs of the times, of things winding down, of, of, of Jesus Christ coming back, uh, of uh, uh, this world uh, nearing its ultimate destruction, um, and uh, it, 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 being, it being too late. Um, but uh, what, what do people do? They, they want to ignore the signs that are going before them. They want to continue to live in, in their sin. They want to seek and continue following that desire uh, to have just enough Jesus to make them feel warm and tingly, itching ears, uh, but, but never coming under the power of, uh, of his word, uh, never coming uh, and seeking uh, a repentant state. <clears throat> And we will get into that a bit more, uh, uh, I believe, starting in, in verse 3. Uh, but that, that's, that's where we're at. we're at. Just because times change, technology changes, people stay the same. Um, and we've covered this uh, uh, extensively, but these are the books we've been in back to back, dealing with the same, same subjects. Eventually, we'll get into some future uh, things in Ezekiel, but... But th this is where we're at right now, um, and uh, th this is what they wanted to acquire of. They pretty much just wanted God to say, yeah, go on, you know, I think, I think you've had enough. Um, verse 2, then came the word of the Lord unto me, saying, and, and, and we see that uh, here is where we can understand specifically, this is not Ezekiel's, um, uh, this is not Ezekiel's, opinion in this chapter. This is not uh, what he has determined uh, that, that uh, ought to happen based on scripture that he's studied. He's not giving his uh, opinion, his thought process. He is, he is coming directly from God, giving them exactly what God has told them. Um, and they're not going to like, they're not going to like the message. Uh, just like uh, many people today, when they hear uh, when they hear uh, the actual words of God, when they hear a preacher that isn't bringing his opinion, but he's bringing what God has given him, uh, a lot of people will get offended by that. Uh, the you know the, a good Bible believing preacher will get a lot of backlash, a lot of hate for it, and um, but it, it, it's all it's all in his faithfulness to God. It's it's not them. Actually, in, that, in, in their ignorance, they think they're hating the, the preacher that, that's uh, saying these words. But in, in reality, they're hating everything God has to tell them. Uh, that's who they are hating. Um, um, the preachers will often get a lot of the backlash in the, in the name of the Lord. But he warned, he warned them of that, that if they, you know, if they persecuted him, um, if they hated him, they were going to hate uh, those that were faithful to to. Uh, teaching and preaching his word and um, but that that's where we're at today it, it is there's a lot of people that that don't realize there's a lot of, of professing Christians out there today that don't realize <coughs> that that when they have an issue with somebody who's giving the word of God to to a church or or wherever that may be, somebody online, um, what have you, uh, when they're getting upset, they're very much 100% getting upset at what God has to say to them, uh, what God has to say to the church. Anytime you're offended in the congregation, it ain't because of the man uh, standing behind the pulpit preaching the word. It's because you didn't want God to give that message today because it, it brought some conviction in you. Amen. Amen. It, that is 100% where we're at today. That's 100% what they're about to hear. It's 100% what they're about to be upset at. But, but what, what they needed to understand is God already told them what, what they needed to do. They, they, they didn't want to listen uh, before captivity was ever 
uh, necessary, before judgment was ever necessary. They didn't want to repent and turn from their wicked ways. Um, and that's what that's all God ever wants from any of His uh, uh, from anybody's repentance, whether that's a repentance to salvation or a repentance uh, if, if we mess up, if we stumble. Um, that, that's what God wants to hear first and foremost. We need to seek forgiveness, um, or we, we're going to get exactly what they're going to hear in this next verse. But they need to understand that God had already told them that they were going to be in captivity for a while, that they needed to serve, that they were going to serve Nebuchadnezzar for a while. That was just what was going to happen um, in their faithfulness. They needed to be prepared to be there. Um, that's not the answer they wanted to hear. Uh, which is why they're inquiring of Ezekiel yet again, um, because they they hear these these uh, ear tickling prophets and, and, and priests telling them that that the, it's going to be a short captivity. We'll be home back to normal soon enough, and, and it's just mimicking everything that we see throughout um, throughout uh, the United States, throughout the world, but the United States today. Um, but there's so many. So many churches out there, and you can look at the blasphemy they preach online. It wasn't that long ago Shane did a sermon on it, of, of just the wicked, vile things that are being done in, in what they call the house of God, but God's not there. Satan very much is there. They, they might as well call it a satanic temple. Um, uh, they, they very much bring the world into it, playing filthy music, things like that. And, and then just preaching nothing but self-love and then and self-acceptance and, and not going to church for, for God, but for you. Um, we covered all this stuff um, not that long ago in, the, in, in Shane's message, but um, that's exactly what they wanted to hear. Um, that's exactly what, what many people are hearing in the United States. And that, again, that's why it's so important. Half them people, if they had opened a King James Bible... I'd go as far as to say if they would actually open most versions of the Bible, they would at least get some semblance of, of uh, the fact that, well, this doesn't say live your best life now, now really. They're not interested in that. They, they want the, uh, the pastor to validate their actions rather than getting in the King James Bible, studying it, and, being, and, and finding themselves validated and justified in Jesus Christ and in the Word of God. Amen. Uh, there, there's a reason why this is the only Bible that reads the way it does, because it's the words of God. There's a reason why the, the other versions have all these subtle uh, changes, uh, the the completely deleted text, completely uh, changed doctrine, completely changing who Jesus Christ was uh, subtly, so that people would argue, "Oh no, it's still saying the same thing." Uh, well, no, it's not. It's very much, um, very much changing who Jesus Christ was. It, it's changing the word of God. And, and, but that's who, that's who Satan wants. He wants you just close enough that you don't realize you're worshiping him. Um, and uh, he wants you to stay in your sin. He, want, he wanted them to stay in, in their sin. He didn't want them to, to serve God um, in Ju Judah. He didn't want them to serve God in Jerusalem. He didn't want to serve God by listening to him and, and, and preparing to be in captivity uh, and, and to serve Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, what he wanted them to do is continue to defy God. And, and that, that, so they come back. Well, the, these priests and stuff over here, we would like to inquire from you because what we're, what we're being told uh, is, is that this is almost over. It, it, it's a bunch of garbage and a bunch of lies. And, and it, it just blows my mind that there were 23,000 corrections to the Sinaiticus before it was ever even put out to create all these other perverted versions of the Word of God. Um, and it, it blows my mind, but that's little bits of history that's not taught. What, what people hear is, um, easier to read, easier to understand, more accurate word of God, and people jump all over it. Oh yeah, they get so interested in it, but they don't look for themselves to study behind it and see that that well, the thing that they used to translate this had to be corrected twenty three thousand times because it didn't make sense. 
to me that would say 100 percent well that's because this is man-made and god never intended it for it to be part of his word amen um for those of us that were here with with this um with the king james bible and, and going through with shane where shane preached to us and showed us that this is the 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 seventh iteration the seventh purified seven times pure word of god um changed to english uh translated to english rather um that's what we can stand on and have hope on and, but but we're a remnant now and I, I looked up yesterday and this 55 percent of people uh, and, and I, I don't find these accurate because because numbers my personal belief because I, I think we would still live in a drastically different nation um, because of the, the conviction and, and faith that this book uh, brings but there's 55 they say that 55 percent of, of everybody agree that the King James Bible is, is the best version and I suppose, in a sense, they could claim that, but still read other versions. I, you know, Shane covered that too. Uh, but 55 um, percent, and, and the numbers in these other versions of their popularity were were actually very low, like in the low uh, low uh, teens and tens and six six percent even on on some of them. Uh, but uh, that's the version that that is still uh, studied and read out of. In, in most of the churches today and, and I just get back to thinking God's not the author of confusion can you imagine going to a church where the, the pastor's preaching out of an NASB but you have an NIV and 15 other people have 15 other versions and they all read different yeah, I, I, I can't imagine I can't imagine being in that chaos to me that would just make no sense and that largely is yet another reason why people uh are just going to trust and listen to what the pastor has to say, or the man that's calling himself a pastor, um, and not really looking into it for, for themselves. Right. To me, that would be like being in a room full of people that speak a bunch of different languages yeah. and trying to understand. Right. Yeah. Yes, very much it would. But that's where they're at today. That's what. That's where Judah uh, pretty much is. They, they wanted to listen to this other word. They wanted this other word to be true. And Ezekiel giving them the actual word they wanted to ignore. They wanted no part of it. it. See how history just constantly repeats itself when it comes to to, to what God has ordained his people to do. Um, and how his, his people who claim to be his continue to fight against it. Yet he still tries to get their attention. He still tries and seeks and, and, and wants, wants them to repent. Wants him to come, them to come back to him. But in verse 3... It says, Son of man, speak unto, the ele- speak unto the elders of Israel, and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Are ye come to inquire of me? As I live, saith the Lord God, I will not be inquired of by you. Wilt thou judge them, son of man? Wilt thou judge them? Cause them to know the abominations of their fathers. So, God sits here. Here, here we have it. Are, are ye come to inquire of me? Uh, God already knows this answer. Of course they have. Uh, God, this isn't a question God needed to ask. He already knows what they want. They already, he already knows what they want to inquire of him of. That's why he immediately fo- follows with, uh, I will not be inquired of by you. Because God doesn't hear the, the, the prayers of the wicked. What God hears is a, the prayers of repentance. Um, it, God didn't come to them in, in a state of being cold-hearted, just not wanting to listen to them because they're such a, 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 a evil people. They're such they've gone so wicked that I've had to bring my wrath down upon them, so I don't even want to hear from them. That that's not what God is doing here at all. Uh, the reason He's not hearing from them is because they didn't come to Ezekiel uh, in a repentant state of mind and a repentant uh, with a repentant heart wanting to seek what God would have them do. They wanted to, to come and, and, and 100% seek uh, if God would give them the go-ahead to trust these other false uh, 
priests that are giving them giving, giving them these lies and this messages of a short captivity and going home soon. That that's all they wanted. They wanted to go back to their wickedness. They wanted to go back to their adultery. They wanted to go back to their drunkenness. They wanted to go back to their their theft. They wanted to go back to their riches. They wanted to go back to their false gods. Uh, they wanted to go back to what made them feel good, uh, rather than seeking uh, after God, rather than uh, trusting in Him, letting Him uh, be the one to fulfill uh, to fulfill them, to provide for them as He had done. And that that's part of that's part of part of the reason why the wrath of God came down so hard upon His people is because He literally provided everything for them. The nation, uh, we're going to get in this history lesson anyway. I'm, I'm, I keep trying, I'm trying to get ahead of myself. But they, 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 didn't, they were not interested in what God had to say unless it was going to be yes. Those false priests out there, I've, I've decided that, that they're not false priests. I've decided what they're telling you is true. You can go about your way and, and, and just know that I'm going to leave you alone. I'm not going to judge you. I'm not going to bring my... Uh, my my uh, wrath down upon you no more. Go back and live how you want to live. If God would have told them that, they'd have been happy as all get out. They'd have never bothered God again. God loves them too much for that. God loves us too much for that to leave us alone. Um, that is, that is why His judgment and His wrath is necessary uh, when He decides that it comes to a point where where He needs to do something to try to get our attention. He obviously has done a lot to try to get these elders' attention, but they still aren't interested in listening to him. What they're interested in is, again, getting back to their lifestyle, their wickedness. The fact that God um, wasn't uh, wasn't just uh, turn, turning them away um, should have spoke to them <clears throat> yet again on a much bigger scale of, 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 well, we know we're coming to Ezekiel, we know, and, and that's crazy to think about. They know they're coming to, uh, they're hearing these lies. They're coming to Ezekiel because they actually want to hear from God, not someone who they know hasn't been accurate any step of the way. They've been wrong since since the, the original invasion of Babylon, uh, but they still want, they still desired for them to, to be telling the truth. That's what that's where their desire lies, and, and they they ain't even on on the first ones. That you know, King. Kings were, uh, uh, oh, this popped in mind. Uh, there was a king that came. Uh, he'd go to Jeremiah in secret to see what God had to say, but then he would cave to, to what the crowd wanted. Um, and, and inevitably getting um, Jeremiah um, in prison. <clears throat> but these elders, that, that's exactly where they were. They, they wanted to hear what God had to say, but they weren't interested in following him what God had, had uh, told them, had commanded them to do. Um, <clears throat> 100%. You know, if, you're, if, if anybody in here went, went up to somebody, um, knowing what the answer was already going to be, know, known, known what they had already been told on a, a, any, any subject, uh, create one in your mind, <clears throat> and, and they went and said, yeah, I know you specifically said to do this this way, um, but I, I would like to listen to the, how this person says, do I like to do it that way? Um, person's not even going to listen to you. Why, why are you even coming to me? That, that's the response you're going to get. Why are you even coming to me? You've already made up your mind. You obviously want to do it that way. You're not going to listen to the way I told you to do it. And that's exactly where God is um, right now is why, why he doesn't even want them to inquire of him. They've already made up their mind of which way they're going to follow. Uh, coming to him... Uh, to see it, to see if anything's different was a complete waste of their time. It was a waste of God's time uh, because they weren't going to, they weren't coming to repent to seek to follow God. And God's God's very much had enough of that uh, mindset. He, he's he's had um, enough of it in the churches today. I mean, we see we see things things spiraling down um, and. Uh, I, I, I always say, I don't know if it's five minutes or 500 years from now. I, I don't know. 5,000 for that matter. But we, we know the signs of the times, the wickedness, um, and, and the corruption in, in high places, um, with the war of Babylon, um, in, in our politics, um, it, in churches. 
you know, you know, for the, the history that, that, that goes in, um, let, let's go ahead and move on before I completely get ahead of myself. <clears throat> um, but that, that's basically where it's at. And that's, that's something that people need to understand in the churches today is, is God is only interested um, in hearing from you. If you're in a, a reprobate state of mind, if you're, if you're lost, um, the only thing God is going to listen to um, listen to you for, uh, on it is first coming to him in repentance. If you're not coming in hit to, to him in repentance, uh, whether that's to get saved or 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 uh, to to cut sin out of your life and get right with him, um, you can pray all day, all week long. God's not going to hear it. He's, he's not going to don't even inquire from him. You need to get be in prayer about getting your heart right. Um, seeking to get your heart right and being in prayer with him and seeking forgiveness if that's the state you're in. If you're in the state uh, like these elders are in, that's first and foremost what, what you need to be doing is, is seeking his forgiveness first so that when you come to him to inquire knowledge of his book or understanding, he's there, your, your heart is right with him and, and he, can actually, uh, he can actually teach you something, something show you something, uh, give you the desire to to learn of his word, learn of him, be in church, um, things, things, of, uh, things of that nature. But in verse 5, it says, And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, In the day when I chose Israel, and I lifted up mine hand unto the sea of the house of Jacob, and made myself known unto them in the land of uh, of Egypt, when I lifted up mine hand unto them, saying, I am the Lord your God, in the day that I lifted up mine hand unto them, to bring them forth out of the land of Egypt, into a land that I had espied for them, flowing with milk and honey, which is the glory of all lands. So here's the list, here's where the history lesson's starting uh, for them. Uh, exactly Exactly what uh, God is going to lay out, you know, he's going to lay it out on the line for them of why in their ignorance they, they, they need to understand everything that God has done for them. This is why history is so important. Um, like I've already get, got into some of this, just going back and, and studying and reading books and, and, and looking at the history of what it took to create this Bible, going back even further, all the way back to... Uh, Acts, where they were first called Christians in Antioch, and you follow that history all the way up, up through there, and, and you look at the faithful men uh, that that died preserving His Word, the faithful men that, that refused to get on board with the state-run church, the the faithful men that refused to to compromise um, for thousands of years. Uh, to, to get on board with the, with the, the Catholic Church. And, and because of that, the Catholic Church were sitting there and he, they killed over 50 million of them. Uh, to, to just uh, see the faith that it took, to see what God did throughout history to, to keep his promise to preserve his word, to give us his word uh, today, uh, it, it's given me a, a greater, a, a much more appreciation to just to all the blood that went in to, to the creation of, of, of his words in English that we have here. And, and, but people, people aren't interested in, in the history behind things. Uh, and that's, that's, that's troublesome e even in our schools. That's, that's a whole other Bible study you could do um, all the way through the colleges and the politics and medias and all that. Uh, things have been, a version of history has been given um, and, and the details, some of the more important details behind that history, that they're omitted, they're left out. You know, they'll teach you about the Crusades, but they won't teach you who was being killed in those Crusades. It wasn't, it wasn't heathen nations. It, it was, it was Christian people being martyred by the Catholic Church, who you can read in your Bible and you can read is the Whore of Babylon. They, they, they have done nothing since. Since they came to be officially some, somewhere in, in the 300s, I, I believe, um, memory serves me right. From, from then, then on, they have done nothing but strive 
to be uh, the authority behind this Bible rather than God being the authority behind the Bible. And, and they, anybody that wants to stand in their way in, in faith and trust in Jesus Christ, they have killed uh, and continued to kill all the way up. It still happens today. You don't hear about it. But, but even anybody that read Ravening Wolves that Shane uh, recommended, and unless somebody grabbed it, I know there's a copy in there because I brought a copy of it back. Um, e e even even in uh, uh, during World War II, there was almost <coughs> two, two million people killed by the Catholic Church. It, it, but this is a history that that, uh, that that people, unless you go out actually seeking to study it, this is a history that you'll get. But it, it's really given me a greater appreciation of this, and, and 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 I think that's part of the reason here here uh, why God's given them this history lesson, but it's a history lesson that we need to understand uh, today just as much as they needed to understand it, just as much as they needed to hear it. Um, uh, but uh, here's, here's what they're being told. Um, you know, let me say this real quick. You know, because some of these churches, they'll, they'll tell you... Um, They'll tell you because these elders they want to get back to their sin. And in the churches today, that's all people want to do. They want to continue to live in their in their you know in their fornication and adulterous ways. Get, go to the bar, get drunk, um, uh, and party and have a good time, but still be saved. And, and, and churches will tell you, oh yeah, yeah, it, it's fine to go do all that. Just just make sure you repent. Just make sure you ask God to forgive you. No big deal. You ain't even got to open your Bible to do that. And, and then you've got. Uh, you've got the whore Bible on telling them the same thing, but then when they come to, they, they'll, they'll tell them, well, you know, just make sure you come to confession so that we can tell you how to repent to Mary. Um, it's just such twisted, perverted doctrine. Um, that's all that, that's all a lot of these, 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 uh, mega churches and, and, and Catholic churches are preaching. They're, they're, they're a bunch of perverts preaching a perverted gospel. And, and that, that's just the cold hard direct truth and that's exactly what uh, what these elders uh, needed they were, they needed to be reminded that 400 years ago God God took them out of uh, bondage from Egypt um, and that's how this little history lesson starting to them in verse 5 and, and uh, that God took them out of the land of Egypt and in verse 6 he's reminding them that he had given them this land he had, he were they were on the way to be given this land that was flowing with milk and honey that everything that everything that God has now taken care taken away from the current generation He's speaking to right now, uh, everything that God had provided to Him was this these previous generations that eventually uh, we'll get into that eventually through them being cleansed in the desert um, that, that God had given them all this land flowing with milk and honey. You know, we we can read through Joshua to see everything that that God uh, uh, walked Israel through. Uh, to get to that land. Um, I think I think I lied to you. I thought we were going to get get through the first eight, but we got about ten minutes to stretch our legs and and uh, whatever you need to do. So we'll pick up in seven next week. Does anybody have any additional thoughts on on? Uh,